the kidnapper loses patience, throws the protagonist to the floor, and grabs her face. From this point onward, the subject hears groans from unidentified members of the audience, gripping the protagonist. Bruh, get out of the theater, dude. Later, in the void. What's going on, everyone? It's your boy, Savvy, and welcome back to The Savvy Show. And in today's episode, it looks like we have an interesting and possibly, hopefully, a scary one on our hands today, guys. This is SCP-5040, Slip Mouth Woman, Tears of Blood. I mean, first impressions with the title alone, it seems like something from a nightmare, like a Slip Mouth Woman, Tears of Blood, like crying blood, like, yo. <laughs> Let's see how tragic or scary this SCP is today because I can't wait to find out. So with that being said, if you guys are excited for this reaction, please remember to smash that like button. Also smash the sub button, join the family if you're not already part of it. And also hit that bell so you can stay plugged for each and every upload. Like always, hit me up on Patreon if you want to support the kid or you have other suggestions for me to cover in the future over there. So with that being said, let's get this show started. Alrighty, SCP-5040, Tears of Blood. Viewer discretion is advised. When she wakes up, she finds herself in an unfamiliar building with her arms and legs bound. She is accompanied by a number of other female captives, some of whom still remain unconscious. Hello, everybody. I'm the rubber. Uh, didn't look like she had a slip mouth. That was the SCP in that little clip, but we shall see. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Euclid Class Object SCP-5040. SCP-5040, also known as Tears of Blood, is a non-existent Japanese horror film which spontaneously manifests itself within human memories. Wow. Those affected by 5040 will remember going to see the film even in instances where their attendance would contradict empirical evidence. This SCP reminds me of The Ring. Have you guys seen that movie? It's a, Now, it's a pretty old movie, but guys... That's the first vibes I got. I don't want to ruin the movie if you haven't seen it, but I'm getting strong vibes that, that this SCP was probably inspired from that movie or something from The Grudge, who knows. Afflictions may occur in any venue where movies are shown, including cultures where its content would typically be otherwise prohibited. Subtitles and or dubbing will be used when appropriate. Descriptions of the film are always similar in nature, as are the circumstances and events surrounding the viewing. However, reports of 5040's story and characters are never fully consistent. In the film's setting, subplots, character names, and much of the dialogue will be different for each viewer. Casting also varies and appears largely arbitrary. A broad variety of Japanese performers and entertainment personalities, both living and deceased, have been said to star in the film. Additionally, this occurs even when the actor in question has no real-life associations with the horror genre. After conducting more than 300 interviews, researchers have constructed a detailed synopsis of SCP-5040's most consistent story elements and the most common sequence of events associated with the viewer's memory of their screening attendance. So is the Slipmouth Woman a part of this SCP, like SCP-5040-1? And the SCP is the story itself revolving around the slip mouth woman because there's different characters and different roles. Um, not, th this is an interesting concept for SCP. It's not as self-explanatory as I thought it would be. The film always begins at sunset. If a subject had a prior engagement or a scheduled appointment for that day and time, they will recall that their plans were abruptly canceled or resolved through unforeseen circumstances. Wow. The subject will then decide to spend their free time watching a movie at a local theater. Upon arrival, they will see a large crowd gathered at the box office and learn that the entire theater had been reserved for a special event, uh -oh. a one-time only screening of a rare, critically acclaimed film. Admission is free. Drawn in by the excitement, the subject will indulge their curiosity and get in line for a ticket. Most seats are already occupied when the subject reaches the auditorium, but they find an empty space in the back. They notice that a large number of people throughout the audience wear disposable face masks, even if this practice is not common within the local culture. Oh, it is. <laughs> it is. I see what you did there, Rubber. <laughs> you know damn well it is. The woman who takes a seat next to the subject wears one such mask, as does the woman beside her. The remaining seats are quickly taken, but patrons continue to file in. 
Mm. By the time the lights dim, the audience fill out the stairs and aisles completely, leaving the areas around the exits They're as standing? standing room only. Wow. An IV pole carrying a bag of unknown fluid may be seen protruding from the crowd, what? but with no clear indication as to who it is connected to. The subject might also notice that elsewhere in the theater, one of the masked audience members wears a hospital gown. Bro, okay, I'm getting weird vibes. What If, if I was that dude, I will be kind of sus about what's actually going on right now. Like someone in the middle of the aisle with an IV watching a movie, bro. Like, yo, come on, man. There are no trailers or advertisements before the film. That's crazy. The theater goes silent when the film begins. The film opens with the female protagonist going about mundane activities in her day-to-day -day life. Okay. She is interrupted by a phone call from an unknown party who tells her that her loved one had been hospitalized. When the protagonist leaves her apartment to go to the hospital, she is attacked by a male assailant and loses consciousness. Dang. When the protagonist wakes up, <clears throat> she finds herself in an unfamiliar building with her arms and legs bound. She is accompanied by a number of other female captives, some of whom still remain unconscious. Okay, so it is a movie. So basically this SCP is a movie with the slip mouth woman. That's what I'm assuming. Interested to see how this is going to play out. The women briefly discuss the possibility of an escape, but are interrupted when the kidnapper appears. He notices one of the women crying and kills her without hesitation. Yo! The kidnapper explains that he intends to release the captives after 24 hours, but only under the condition that they do not cry. Throughout the film, the kidnapper exacts various forms of physical and psychological torture on the group. Despite their best efforts, the captives prove unable to hold back their tears. Dang, so all of them are going to die? And is the main one in the middle, or is she not part of that group right now? And they are murdered one by one until only okay. the protagonist remains. She is the main one. Frustrated by the protagonist's resolve, the kidnapper gradually escalates her torture. However, Cheating. the protagonist only responds with rebukes, which angers the kidnapper even further. As the protagonist makes a speech against the kidnapper, the subject notices what seems to be a slight echo to the dialogue. They eventually realize that the two masked women sitting beside them are softly repeating every line of dialogue as it is spoken in real time. If they look further, they will see that the lower half of the women's masks are saturated with saliva and their hands are clasped together so tightly that their fingernails have begun to draw blood. Oh my god. At the film's climax, the kidnapper approaches the protagonist with a double-edged razor like an blade interesting movie. and announces that even if she is freed, she will spend the rest of her life horribly disfigured. This leads to an argument between the two which touches on themes such as the nature of inner and outer beauty, the value of women in society, and the societal stigma against expressions of vulnerability. Wow. Eventually, the kidnapper loses patience, throws the protagonist to the floor, and grabs her face. From this point onward, the subject hears groans from unidentified members of the audience, gripping the protagonist. Bruh, get out of the theater, dude. <laughs> After hearing the moans, I'm out. I don't care how good the movie is. This is too weird for me, bro. This is way too weird. Who's moaning at a scene like this? She's about to get her mouth split open. Are you kidding me? You're moaning to that? Some twisted individuals. In his lower lip between his thumb and forefinger, the kidnapper takes the razor blade and cuts a deep fissure from the corner of her mouth to her chin. He works the blade across her face using a rough sawing motion until her lower lip is partially amputated. He pauses to mock the protagonist, and she uses the opportunity to grab the razor from him yes. with her teeth. Get him, get him. Before the kidnapper can react, Sasha's she slices eye. his left eye open. Hey. The kidnapper screams as blood and vitreous humor spill from his face. Tears allowing of blood. time for the protagonist to maneuver the razor to her fingers and cut through her bindings. Enraged and half blind, Ooh. the kidnapper grabs the remaining flap of the protagonist's lower lip and pulls sharply. The kidnapper tears it from her face, along with a large strip of her right cheek. As the kidnapper expresses oh his God. satisfaction, the protagonist finishes freeing herself and slits the kidnapper's throat 
with the razor. This guy's crazy. Whereas the film's previous murders often differ between manifestations, all interviewees gave consistent descriptions of the violent climax. Okay. They displayed a greater degree of clarity in their recollection of the scene than at any other point in the film. So I guess all the other points in the film could go either way with whoever's watching it. They could infer different things, but the climax is what is the constant variable within the movie. Okay. 80% of subjects also reported that the movie's climax was accompanied by a profound sense of dread, but did not attribute the feeling to the movie itself. The protagonist hurries to the exit as the kidnapper bleeds to death on the floor. Although her speech is impeded by her injuries, she pauses before leaving to mock the kidnapper one last time. The protagonist calmly Dang. tells the kidnapper, You cried tears of blood, and therefore you had to die according to your own rules. The film abruptly cut. Badass. Okay, she's badass. Oh, yo, I actually want to see this movie now. <laughs> This is actually really cool. ...to an unspecified point in the future. Now wearing a face mask to hide her disfigured mouth, the protagonist walks down the street to her apartment, indifferent to the crowd of paparazzi that follows her. When she finally reaches her bedroom, the protagonist slowly takes off her mask and looks at herself in the mirror. She stares in silence oh at the God. missing lower portion of her face and sheds a tear. Over the course of several minutes, her weeping gradually builds into frenzied sobs and shrieks. Damn, out of everything that she went through, she starts crying when she actually sees her face. Damn. Just the realization of what she is now is what's making her cry compared to all the torture that she went through. That, that hits deep, guys. Yo, at least for me. The film cuts to black and the credits roll. But the sound of the protagonist's cries continue to play with that's, no other audio until the credit reel ends. That's hella creepy, bro. The other audience members largely remain silent after the movie ends, exchanging only whispers as they exit the theater. Subjects have claimed to have seen small red puddles and stains on the theater floor on their way out. Those who remain past this point will experience an escalating feeling of unwelcomeness until they are driven to leave. Yeah, get out. Why, why would you want to stay? You know, some dweebs, bro. I hope you enjoyed What's today's over? video. Oh my god. This was an interesting one, but like with this one, man, well, I'm not even like upset either. Like it was a cool SCP. The concept was really different. I don't think I ever when it came across SCP with this kind of concept. Yeah, if you guys enjoyed this reaction, please let me know by smashing that like button. And also let me know in the comment section below what you guys thought about this SCP. Or if you guys actually read the file of this SCP, let me know what you guys think about um the concepts that was probably left out in this animation. So, yeah, I would love to hear you guys in the comment section below. And also remember, hit that bell so you can stay plugged for each and every upload. And unfortunately, that concludes today's episode. However, I'll catch you guys on the next one.